But if I ask you, what are the tracks that you are excited about or what are the tracks that you would be attending? There are three tracks that are happening concurrently throughout the event. Um, in the wild, which is end user stories, end user experiences, um, you know, great technical content from these users talking about how they use Cloud Foundry, how they apply it to their use cases. The second, how to. These are kind of the fundamental blocking and tackling, like how do you do X, Y, or Z? Um, but, but also there's a few um, interesting talks in there that are not directly tied to Cloud Foundry, but perhaps they're technologies that you might choose to deploy on top of it. Um, and then the third track is behind the curtain. That is all about interaction between and with the open source community who creates the Cloud Foundry software. So they're all happening at the same time. Now, each one of those tracks is a lot of really interesting talks inside of them. Um, my approach to the event, and I, I think that many people will approach it this way, is that we're going to pick at every talk slot, we're going to pick one of those three tracks to go to, depending on what talk looks interesting, uh, the most interesting. And then we're also going to go back and watch a bunch of videos afterwards, which uh, that's, that's a lot of content. It's going to be a lot of information, a lot of learning. Um, but I think the value is there for, for people to go back um, in, in addition to picking what, you know, what looks most intriguing. Um, just throwing a couple of uh, very quickly talks out that um, are kind of top of mind for me. Um, you know, I'll point to a uh, talk by Liberty Mutual Insurance um, that's going to be a real world walkthrough of, of how to migrate applications into and between Cloud Foundry environments. Um, I think that's incredibly practical. I know that they're, they're doing it based on uh, a large number of, of deployed applications and they build up a real robust a set of knowledge about how to do these migrations. Um, so that's going to be really neat. Um, there are talks from both IBM and SAP that deal with some of the both um, challenges that, that uh, they as multi-tenant, massive scale providers of Cloud Foundry clusters have, um, both in scaling as well as in uh, security and multi-tenancy. Um, they're going to kind of dig deep into implementation details there. I think that's going to be really neat. Um, and there are talks on internals of, of how the open source community itself builds and tests Cloud Foundry. Um, they're interested, you know, they're very interesting um, if you want to understand some of the thinking that, um, uh, you know, what I kind of call the platform plumbers of our community, right? The people that create this software, um, uh, you know, the way they think about these problems. So uh, one of those talks is going to be about how chaos engineering principles are being applied to, to testing the, the platform. Uh, another good example would be uh, the migration from a REST-based API to using Kubernetes-based CRDs um, uh, in, in the platform architecture. So custom resource definitions. Those will be both, I think, really educational as well as, um, you know, if, if you're not uh, necessarily using any of those technologies, techniques, or patterns, um, they'll be just a really good way to kind of get a sense of what, what's the power of a CRD or how does chaos engineering help me? Um, and then just kind of, you know, fast forward and say, well, what are, what are some of the technologies that are used with apps deployed into Cloud Foundry or in apps deployed to Cloud Foundry? Um, I think it's, uh, I'll, I'll highlight two of them. So one of them is Comcast is going to spend a bunch of time talking about machine learning. Um, how they look at machine learning as a way to augment basic business application functionality um, and practical examples of, of how they've done that in order to service their, their clients better. Another would be WebAssembly. Uh, so WebAssembly um, is, is really, frankly, I, I think, growing in interest in the developer communities. Uh, so there'll be an introduction to it, how it might be deployed into a Cloud Foundry-based environment. Um, and I think also some talk about how WebAssembly might be employed inside of the Cloud Foundry architecture. So that'll be a lot of fun as well.